And now, for a story closer to the swirly whirly interdimensional moxahedron I have, where a heart might be, where I made of fleshy skin stuffs like you. I think to narrate it, I choose the piano guy. <laughs> Are we doing the curtain close or are we just going forward? With this? Oh, just checking for fun! <laughs> now, let's see. We need some people to play. It's time to send the little ones to Dreamland. And set your radio's dial to spooky. Bolt the doors, lock your windows, and steal yourself for mysterious suspense in today's final feature, Beyond Belief. Meet Frank and Sadie Doyle, toast of the upper crust, headliners on the society pages, and oh yes, they see ghosts. Join the Doyles in tonight's dark episode, Making Spirits Fight. Our story begins high above Park Avenue in the Plaza Hotel suite that Frank and Sadie Doyle have called home for many years. Frank, darling, do you remember when we first met? Sometimes. You were there, and possibly I as well. You were there. Shall I tell the story? As long as I am in it, go ahead and tell it. <laughs> you were my favorite character in it. Well then, allow me to get comfortable. <laughs> if you're getting comfortable, darling, get two. <laughs> Now then, the secret origin of Frank and Sadie Doyle. Um, who would bother us now? Anyone would. Here's a notion. Just this once. Let's ignore the rapping of the door. I second. Motion carried. Clink. <laughs> it's me! For reasons that you probably can guess, I've decided to play this part myself. What will happen with the hat, though? Who cares? <laughs> okay, I'm another guy now. <laughs> oh, also, also, you two have to switch every page. <laughs> Well, you must be two people who live here now. Or maybe you're one and a guest, or the other way around. It ultimately matters little, and to me right now, less so. Well, as long as that... Hush, I don't care what you have to say. I'll 
I'll say it anyway. As long as I... Mm, fu- mm. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that hat? Frank! Frank, we've never heard that word in our house before. Sometimes in the bedroom, but not when guests are here. as I don't care if you listen. How did you get a key to our home? And furthermore, I don't care. So rather than answer, turn it over and leave. Do you know who I am and what I'm like? You clearly don't. I like that you're not interested in talking to us. (laughs) Yes, continue it on the other side of the door. I'm Slapert Frowl, a miser in this city. Your name is familiar. <laughs> I'm quite a prominent miser. That's not it. Slapper Frau. <laughs> you lived here before we did, didn't you? And we get your mail sometimes. And one time, we got your ghosts. That does sound like something that would happen to us. It was a Christmas or two ago. One ghost stopped by to warn us that three ghosts would be stopping by. Then those ghosts came. I don't know where we're going with this. <laughs> and then those ghosts came to teach us Slapper Frown. That's big talk coming from someone in the Sparks Nevada universe. <laughs> One ghost stopped by to warn us that three ghosts would be stopping by. Don't worry, Sade, you'll get it together by the next page. <laughs> and, then, and then those ghosts came to teach Slappet Frau the true meaning of Christmas. Did we learn anything? <laughs> of course not, darling. We're not Slappet Frau, we're us. We know quite enough already. <laughs> This is why... (laughs) This is why I've come. First ghost you speak of, my business associate, found me Christmas Eve, and as he did with you, he warned me of three ghosts to follow. The Dickens, you say? (laughs) Well, goodbye. But no fool am I. I didn't hang around for those other three... I didn't get to where I am today by learning anything about humanity. And I do not care to be haunted, not one bit. And I'd already been haunted one bit. Three more bits, no thank you. And I suppose you've come here that we might protect you, being that we are equally home on Park Avenue and the Nether Realms. What's that? You've not come seeking shelter from your haunting. (laughs) I feel as if that's the only reason anyone ever calls anymore. I haven't, but I accept your offer of protection. It wasn't really an offer. But shall we draw up a contract? I can't offer much in recompense, but I'm a, as I'm a miser, but should you be willing to countermand the first ghost to prove your abilities are as you claim, I am glad to pay you a miserly sum to deal similarly with the second ghost, presuming you would throw in the cost of the annulment of the third ghost. Piss. <laughs> What did you just say? I said, pace. All right. That's, that sounded less disgusting that time. <laughs> I'm, willing, I'm willing to entertain counteroffers and undercut them. Sadie wasn't turning you down. She was asking me to pass her a martini. Here you are, darling. I'm the one who's turning you down. Goodbye. No, on second thought, just regular bye. Ah, uh, but you must help me. You must tell me, it's in the lease agreement. I don't think it is. But, but can't you feel it? It's coming. 
And do you know what is coming? Someone else playing this part as I am me again. Oh, God, Felicia Day is the miser. Earlier every year, too. Good news is it's actually not coming. Bad news is it's actually here. Hello, Slappert Frau. Nope. <laughs> You're the Slappert Frau guy. Oh, I forgot uh, to cast that other part. Uh, <laughs> John Ross Bowie, who's mocking me from a chair. <laughs> You'll be home in time for breakfast. <laughs> Hello, Slappert Frowl. Oh, foul spirit, be gone, tell him. <laughs> Hello again. Oh, you two. Yeah, sorry about the mix-up last time. I barely remember it. It's nice of you to say. I mean it, water under the bridge, not water, whiskey probably, or gin. I don't have any guesses what I meant by bridge. How? <laughs> How much are you being paid to do this, oh, Spectre? I'll pay you exactly half not to. You deserve less. Slappert Frowl, I now whisk you to the past, my domain, so you might see that which you have trans... Which... <clears throat> oh, it's not... I'm sorry, hang on. You're both still here. Yeah, I... I can't. I'm having a hard time with... Just uh. relax and try again on your own time. But do hurry up. Okay, here goes. I can't. It's because of her. I can't get over her. I'm still in love with the ghost of Christmas present. I vaguely remember not being interested in that. You remember, Frank. She, <laughs> she told the ghost of the in no uncertain terms that he was history. Sage, your Australian heritage is beginning to show. <laughs> the little New Zealand, I think. Bordering on the heavenly creatures at times. <laughs> Remind me, Sadie, what love is truer than one-sided love? <laughs> Unreciprocated. No? <laughs> what love is truer than one-sided love? Henry. No. <laughs> Try looking at the page. <clears throat> Remind me, Sadie, what love is truer than one-sided love? Reciprocate. <laughs> there we go. than one-sided love. <laughs> Still reciprocated. <laughs> All right. What about what love is stronger than one-sided love? Unrequited love is the strongest love there is. All I can think about is the time we spent together. I'm sorry. Did I black out and ask? <laughs> it, it was just so much fun, you know? Ah, fun! An idiot's diversion! <laughs> <laughs> She just has this joie de vivre. She lives, I don't know what it is. In the moment? Yeah, whereas I'm living in, uh, how would I say it? Somewhere else or something. Uh -oh. <laughs> You're living in the past. 
Present, hi. You, you look great. Did you do something new with your hair? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Slapper Prowl, I, I come to show you to yourself today. I own a mirror, so, you know. <laughs> hang, hang on, I, I have... I have something to say to you, Present. Well, you said everything that needs saying. But let me say it again, louder, so maybe you'll hear it this time. This is not okay. I'm here to do a job. Come on, Slappert Frau. We're going to visit your employees who work even at this late hour. Whoops, at his late hour. No, at this late hour. It's That's coming on tax season. They <laughs> understood the conditions of their employment. I'm part pirate. <laughs> of sling blade. <laughs> I can see this business has nothing to do with us, so we'll just retire. No one leaves until Frau sees what he has wrought. I am acutely aware of what <laughs> I've wrought. No! No, you have to see your put-upon employees unable to partake in the revelries of the holidays. Which holiday exactly? Christmas! I'm talking about Christmas! <laughs> His put-upon employees are unable to attend Christmas parties or Christmas dinners. You are aware that it is January outside, right? Hubba -b 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 january <laughs> Yes. I said that like Scooby-Doo ghost. <laughs> G -g 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 January? Like the month? You're kidding me. Maybe we can work together here. Like we can hit the recent past. Just take my hand. I'm not taking your hand. <laughs> when I get sassy. Maybe it'll come out again. I bet it will. <laughs> Just take my hand. No! <laughs> Look, I will not be... Seriously, I refuse to be defined by you. Defined by me? As far as these people know, I'm just someone you're aching for and whose job is ridiculous. As a female ghost in the workplace, you have to know there's more to me than this. Oh, we don't care. <laughs> and I'm sure you're lovely. <laughs> I can be. I can also be a grouch sometimes. I'll say. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> there it is. That's the grouch. Oh, my moods aren't about you. I'm a complex ghost with unresolved life issues. Both issues from my life and issues about no longer being alive. I was in the middle of a postgraduate degree when I died. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> Having a whiskey. Oh, let me guess. Uh, English literature. Yarn. That's right, pirate. <laughs> That's a focus for those who can afford to live like they cannot afford to live like they can. Argy dark. <laughs> Sorry, Ned Flanders pirate? <laughs> Just because you're basically the personification of the patriarchy doesn't give you the right to judge me, man. That's exactly what it gives me. <sighs> My issues manifest themselves in a strong focus on what's in front of me. I died violently and young. I don't want to talk about it, okay? but it makes me appreciate the moment and not want to dwell too hard on yesterday. And I can't even really consider the future. I live one moment to the next, finding the good in those moments and helping people appreciate them. It's endlessly frustrating that they never do, but I live, so to speak, in hope that they will, and the ghost of Christmas future can take the night off. I, I thought you didn't think about the future. Hey, I do! <laughs> And yet, you want him to take the night off. Yeah, but not like, 
I mean, what is your thing with him? What's your thing with him? Ooh, I don't have a thing with him. You don't see how you smile when someone mentions him. <laughs> he's funny. <laughs> I mean, he's good at his job, and he, oh, have you seen him around his dog? He has a dog? He's a different guy, a good guy, sweet. You know, <laughs> I could someday, I don't know, yeah, but no, yeah, but yeah, some, nah. But maybe some, no, come on, what are you doing? <laughs> it can never work, unless it did, which it would be. I'm dreaming right now, <laughs> unless I'm not. But yeah, someday, maybe. But I have my own stuff to work on. I'm making my way through the great works of literature. That's a thing about me. I garden, I cook. <laughs> you know, my favorite thing about Christmas is that socks and sweaters are the same thickness. <laughs> okay, you're well-rounded. Thank you. Yes, you are as boring as anyone. <laughs> Thank you, I define myself, myself. <gasps> you have to cast someone. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you want to play him. It's you, and then someone else will play the other part. Great. Uh, okay, so someone's gonna, there okay. you <laughs> What? <laughs> Who's that, you? I'm future. And I'm present now? See you in a bit. Hi, Christmas future. <laughs> hey, present. <laughs> oh my God. Don't look at her like that. Don't talk to him like that. And none of you do any of it in here. Past, lo long time no see. You're great, usually gone by the time I get somewhere. Am I early? No, no, <laughs> you're, no, you're. <laughs> I guess I'm McConaughey no. now. Early? No. Oh, no, no. You're right on time. You are right on time. I'm gonna kill all you guys! <laughs> Get on with it. They're called feelings, Slapper Frau. We have them and we're trying to teach them to you. Oh, oh. Arg feelings! <laughs> Driving force for this cannot afford logic. To think I was scared of ye? An oversight? <laughs> Southern pirate. I appreciate you corrected. Arg. <laughs> Can I change my accent midway through? Yeah. I don't know. It Anyways, I'm going to deal with this dummy. <laughs> you guys want to come win? Let me stop you there. <laughs> <laughs> that, you cross that K's voice, line. That voice was going into a most non-whimsical play. <laughs> In a couple of hours. I'll go back to the other one. Anyways, I'm gonna deal with this dummy. You guys wanna come with? You bet we do. She does not speak for all of us. You sure? We're going to Frau's gravesite now. There's nobody there gonna show him true loneliness. Privacy, I mean, I prize it over little else. I long for it in life and welcome it in death. Okay, now it's getting into a sort of cookie monster with a disease. <laughs> Look how you on... <laughs> got a second voice in him. <laughs> Where are we taking it from? I have no idea! Uh, right. Privacy, 
Reed. Oh. <laughs> I prize it over little else. I long for it in life and welcome it in death. Look how unhappy you all are with your lack of solitude, even in death. Privacy, yes, please. Yes, I'm sure. You want privacy, pal? Well, you got it. The guy who bears you, he's first, he's first other person besides your bartender you'll see in years. Bartender? No, don't. No. No. No bartender. I thought maybe you want to hear from him. No. Nope. Precisely how he'll feel. Oh, bartender? What bartender? <laughs> you drank alone, you died alone. Everyone dies alone. <laughs> we won't. We will live together, tipsily, happily ever after. <laughs> Whether or not I die alone, <laughs> and if it matters in that moment. He can do that, but I can't do my one? <laughs> that is worse. <laughs> that person's you're, killed people. Your voice down. <laughs> your voice put people in mind of colorful sweaters and suspicious drinks. <laughs> Too soon to be whimsical. <laughs> All right, guys, let's go. Anyways, I was talking about this. <laughs> Whether or not I die alone, and if it matters in that moment, I do not intend to drink alone as I do not drink. You are misinformed, old spirit. Never have I touched a drop to my tongue. Not really how it's done. <laughs> but I shan't, I shall not. I'm really not wrong about this. He's never wrong. Present, darling. Weren't you not too long ago busy describing how you aren't a being defined by her relationships? <laughs> If I understand what you said, <laughs> I'm not asking to be defined by future yet. <laughs> oh, hey, I like the tree you're barking up, but it couldn't work between us. I'd be a fun time, FYI. Mm. You're a little cuckoo. You bet. And usually I like that. <laughs> but we gotta work together. <laughs> I could quit. Oh my God, do you ever think of the future? I mean, not him, I mean, your future. I never do. Well, can you think of the past? Not yours, though, I mean me past. Like, past as personified. Mm. Right. Wait. <laughs> that might be just the thing. Thank you. No, not you. Mm. <laughs> no, yours. Mine? No! I think it is mine. No! <laughs> yes, you! Yes. You! <laughs> you once aspired to more than haunting. English literature, was it? No! <laughs> yes, you. Go. Surprising no one. <gasps> then, of course, you've read Jane Austen. Probably I was killed before I got the chance. 
Elizabeth Bennet, darling. She defined her times to become an independent woman, and she got the fellow. Sounds like someone I know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I defied the need for all non-alcoholic beverages and one Frank's heart. And liver. So you're saying that in order to not be defined by my affections... It's not in the script, guys. <laughs> so. You're saying that in order to not be defined by my affections... <laughs> so I reckon you're saying that in order to not be... No, no, no. yourself, counselor. <laughs> Not be defined by my affections or... Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. I don't know. I guess those of others, I... Were you wondering if this could take longer? <laughs> <laughs> by the way, I just assume all these are seven hours. <laughs> so you're saying that whatever... I need to not define myself by my affections or those of others. You had it in you all the time, darling. But I've already rid myself of the past. Yeah, I just can't accept it. Well, certainly there was someone before Christmas present. Only Susan. Present really helped me forget about her. And now you're free to remember again. Wouldn't you care to revisit those heady Susan days? Presuming, of course, that they don't take place in this apartment. Susan was so great. She really thought I was cute and stuff. Of course she did. Find her Christmas past. Find her and bring her your strangling, obsessive sort of love. Yeah. Yeah. I'll do that. I'm coming for you, Susan! <laughs> And I'm... And I'm... And I'm going to actually read some of the books I've been meaning to read. And I'm all done here. You didn't actually do anything. <laughs> If I'd known they were so ineffectual, I'd not have fled. You didn't need our help, which we didn't offer and didn't extend after all. Nor did I seek it, nor ask for it. Grumby mentioned you had received mail for me. That's why I came to retrieve it. Oh, yes. Uh, <laughs> let me just uh, find it. Uh, it's around here somewhere. Uh, you ever, oh, that's, ever, not ever, ever, that's mine. Yeah. <clears throat> ever hear of a forward we can dress? My time is too valuable to spend at the posting office. Ah! Here we are. <laughs> Let's see letters, a bill, Christmas cards, which are merely letters to the trash can. <laughs> And what's this package? It's from my father. But he threw me out when I was but a child on Christmas, of all the days for stealing a prized bottle of whiskey. We remember. But I didn't steal the whiskey. We remember. <laughs> what could father possibly have sent? It's a bottle of the type of whiskey he accused me of stealing. According to this card. One moment. There's no way you're invested in this story. You're, you're mentally ill. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha
according to this car. He forgives me and hopes I will forgive him somehow. Oh, he's dying. Oh, he is surely dead by now. He had weeks. It's been years. Okay, now you are just vexing me. Keep it fun and whimsical, gang. Um, well, what are you waiting for? Open it. I do not drink, not a drop, childhood trauma. We, we remember. remember. I cannot help but feel, what is this, sorrow? My father sought to make amends and I would wish for nothing more in this life, but it is too late. Oh, it aches in the core of me. Well, it, it will bother you far less if you take a drink. <clears throat> Everything will. Here's a glass. And some for us. <laughs> That's harder than it looks. Oh, well, this is all right! <laughs> But it feels uh, like I'm finally okay. I forgive you, Father. I, I forgive you, Christmas. All my anger slipping away, slipping. I don't want no trouble in my place. Slipping, slipping, slipping. It's a lot of, lot of anger, a lot of anger there, a lot. Slipping. So yeah, much, so there's a lot. Slipping. I just held myself to another. <laughs> Slipping. Yep, yep, gonna have one too. Thanks. <laughs> Slipping. Uh, slipped. Oh, I am. What's this feeling? I feel like a boy with my toy trucks to scurry. We have a runner. Where are you going, Mr. Frowl? <laughs> To the door, I suppose. A, a door opening noise. <laughs> you there, boy, what day is it? <laughs> uh, Tuesday. <laughs> Go down to the liquor store and get me a bottle as big as you. I'm, I'm not old enough. <laughs> you are the age of some of my most resourceful employees. Now go and get me a bottle as big as you. How would I even carry a bottle that big? <laughs> I mean, they don't make them, but if they did, geez, you think I have the relative strength of an ant? Do you? <laughs> I mean, I want to, but I don't. Here, take these coins and get me a bottle. Coins, huh? Okay. I'll get your bottle. I'll be right back. Hold your breath about it. What an ev <laughs> What an eventually obedient boy. I'm going to run around in the streets throwing snowed balls. <laughs> If there's one thing we learned tonight, it's to always fill out change of address forms at the post office when you move. Yeah, that's a Frank and Sadie Doyle one to drink on. <laughs> if you insist, love. It seems the Doyles have put the last nail in the coffin of the holiday season. 
But Frank and Sadie don't need Christmas to raise their spirits. Join the Doyles next time when they once again walk beyond belief in a frightful tale titled Death Don't say it, it's never true. Fight.